you told me love it <laughs> you told me over a decade ago when we started homesteading that I was gonna own like over 10 cows I would have definitely laughed at you I did not want cows and these kind dairy cows little Brig our new dairy bull here who's just gorgeous He's yeah, I definitely didn't want dairy cows. It's actually kind of embarrassing. <laughs> the, uh, the biggest reason I didn't want to get dairy cows, I'll save that for the end. Uh, comment below, what is some animal that you've absolutely said no to, you do not want to have on your homestead? Maybe your, your partner on the homestead wants it. Let me know if somebody in your homestead wants some animal, what it is, why they want it, and let me know why you will not say yes to it, at least not right now. From the very beginning, Kay is nine times out of 10 been the one who's like, I wanna get this animal. So he was the first one to want animals, period. And I'm usually the one who's like, oh, I don't know, maybe. Some of them I've been much easier of a pushover on. Chickens were like, yeah, no problem, let's get chickens. Cows, I, for a long time, did not want to get, and especially dairy cows. And the first reason I didn't want dairy cows was just the routine. Now, every homestead animal requires some sort of routine, obviously, right? We're out here today working on the chickens. We're feeding them, we're watering them. And these meat chickens, they need feed and water usually twice a day, at least water twice a day for sure. No matter what livestock you bring onto your homestead, there is going to be some sort of routine that you have to stick to. But some animals let you cheat. Oh, let's put the wheels on the back. Scovitz tractors have these little wheels on the back which make dragging them so much easier and they'll rip your lawn or pasture up a lot less if you put those on. Alright, take two. I have to feed these birds every day. Oh and water them twice a day. That means I gotta be out here two times, morning and evening. But let's say I wanna sneak off and go fishing or maybe take a little overnight camping trip or something with the family during the summer. I could put a couple extra chicken feeders inside a chicken tractor, load them up for an overnight getaway. I could put two waterers in here and these chickens are gonna be okay. There's no problem. So while there is a daily routine required with all livestock, things like chickens, pigs, you can usually cheat and, and steal yourself a couple extra hours, even a little overnight getaway if you want to. That's why I did not want a dairy cow. A dairy cow routine seemed relentless. Every morning at the same time, every evening at the same time. There's no, ah, you know what, tonight I wanna go and do a little overnight fishing trip, camping trip. If you're gonna fish early in the morning, you gotta get back in time for milking. If you wanna go fishing in the evening, you gotta milk first. Before I was a homesteader, I was a, what I like to refer to as like chill surfer dude. <laughs> didn't love routine, didn't like having to do the same thing every day. If I wanted to just go on a quick surfing trip out of the blue, I would just do it. I like having that freedom and I think about half of the people that get involved in homesteading, half of them will love a routine by nature, the other half will not love it as much. I'm the half of this partnership that doesn't love that routine and that was the very first reason I was like, no, I cannot have dairy cows, I cannot be married to this place every single time every single day, not for me. So what actually changed my mind about the routine? Well, all I can say as a former city boy, <laughs> homestead life teaches you over time to actually not only tolerate a routine, but if you really lean into this lifestyle and begin to enjoy it, you begin to see value in routine and actually I find now a peace 
in a routine, something you actually look forward to. And so eventually the idea of having to be at the homestead twice a day, every day, no matter what, (laughs) sounded more and more like what we wanted and less what I was trying to avoid. That and also learning more about how to fit a cow into your lifestyle, which we talk a lot about in this video that just popped up on the screen. Click on that to learn about how you can do calf sharing, planning, your lactations, and all the other tricks we use to have a milk cow and a life. The second reason I did not want to get dairy cows was the expense. When you compare buying a couple chickens to buying your first dairy cow, it is a lot more money. You can buy a couple chickens a coop and not even spend $500. You start looking at dairy cows, even just a regular dairy cow, if you were to buy a calf at a dairy down the road, you're getting into the hundreds and thousands of dollars in animal and expense. Cows require a lot of hay in the wintertime to keep them fed. A lot of dairy cows will require grain. So dairy cow bills can start to add up really, really quickly. This is definitely something you will have to consider when deciding whether or not to get any kind of livestock. Can you afford that particular animal? And then can you afford the care on going that animal will require? You know, maybe you can just squeak by and get that dairy cow, but can you afford to feed it hay over the winter time in a year where, like this year, the cost of hay keeps rising? That kept us for a while from being able to actually get a dairy cow, uh, but slowly over time, we were able to save enough money and earn a little bit more from our business to where we knew we could afford a dairy cow. But I still didn't want to get one. And that brings me to my last and probably most embarrassing reason why I did not want a dairy cow. It's really funny to admit this. When you see me standing next to Luna, it's a little ridiculous. I was scared of cows. And even mini jerseys like Luna, who, I mean, Luna doesn't even come up to my waist. They intimidated me. The idea of being near a cow, a cow seems so big, so strong. I was worried, you know, one of us would get kicked by a cow or trampled by a cow. I don't know. I wasn't a, I didn't grow up on a farm or near large livestock. So the idea of a large animal like a cow just intimidated me. Kay grew up around horses. She was used to larger livestock. This was not a concern of hers at all. But she did the smart thing. And we actually talk about this in a recent podcast we recorded with the Mindful Homestead, Jack and Jackie. We were talking about, you know, getting your partner on board with whatever it is you want to do on your homestead. And Jackie, who's a therapist, talked about a technique that's used in therapy to get over fear, exposure therapy. I was actually terrified of chickens. Uh, We used to have to go over to our neighbors and I had to do some like exposure therapy with them because I (laughs) hated things flying and flapping and um, and now I I get right in there with them and it still blows my mind uh, because I never in my wildest dreams would have thought that this is what I'm doing. And I think it's part by part, right? Like, you know, it doesn't mean you have to go to a therapist and have exposure therapy, but it's <laughs> what I did is like went to the neighbors and just, I hung around the chickens. That's it. They gave me a little scratch green. I would throw them out. They'd come up and I would know, uh, again, I do have more skills. I'm a therapist. I know how to manage anxiety. Um, but I think it's really, again, it's small steps, right? Go to a local, if you've got a kind of a petting zoo type farm thing. Um, you know, I guess it's things like that, right? It's that's what would exposure therapy would be just off the cuff and on the fly. Kay brought me on a field trip to a mini Jersey farm and I went from being afraid of the idea of having cows to kind of really liking the idea. I fell in love with them as soon as I was able to stand next to one and pet it. You know, they look bigger maybe on the computer, but hey, lady, flies are nasty today. In person, they're very calming, very grounding animal cows. And that's, I think, where the switch flipped for me. After being around some mini jerseys, getting to pet them, scratch on them, watch them be milked, 
I started thinking, you know what? I could handle that. Not the milking. I was never going to milk a cow. Oh, but we you were. We all know how that turned out. Uh, but at least the idea of having them because Kay wanted a cow so bad, I was able to get over those three things holding me back. I was able to say, you know what? We can do it. We can try it. I'm so glad I did because here we are years and years later with more cows than I With have. a Guernsey. Giant Guernsey. And to be honest, I'm telling them I said it. Cows are my favorite homestead animal now. We now have a lot of cows. We got Guernseys, Jerseys, Highlands. I never imagined we would have one cow. I certainly didn't think we would have as many as we do now and continue to add to the herd. We've There's got so nine. Nine, is that what we have? They have become my favorite animal. They're the easiest animal to work with. They give you so much in yield. And if you're willing to handle the routine of a dairy cow, the additional benefit you get on a homestead, our pigs are getting fat off of milk. Our house is full of cheese, butter, ice cream. It's been amazing. The field trip that made me change my mind, you can actually watch it. It's way back in the Homestead Archives. Watch how afraid I look at the beginning and how I overcome that. Now that you know where we are today, and I encourage any of you who are holding back on an animal, at least give yourself some exposure therapy, and check out the awesome interview we did with Jack and Jackie from the Mindful Homestead.